Welcome back. This is part three of the Turned Part Project in MASP 111. Okay, so this video is picking up right where the last video ended, and I had just cut the one inch diameter, and it was two and an eighth inches back um, turned down the part. So what you're seeing me do right there is I'm getting rid of the burr that was on the edge because I'm about to put some layout die on the part and I'm going to use my calipers to lightly scribe a location mark uh, at one inch down the part. <coughs> Excuse me. Because the 5 eighths diameter that I'm about to turn, um, the print calls for a one inch length. So I'm making this one inch mark, but I'm going to be stopping short of the, uh, the line. And then I'm going to use a travel indicator located on the ways of the lathe against the carriage to make a very precise shoulder um, distance. Now if you're doing this um, operation here, uh, scribing lines with calipers, um, you're only trying to remove the bluing because you don't want to be wearing off the end of your calipers. So I'm going to touch off here, and then I'm going to dial in a hundred thousandths. Well, first it looks like I'm going to zero the dial, and then I'm going to dial in a hundred thousandths. Um, in the last video, I held up a piece of paper with the cut sequence, and I didn't do it on this this fit area right here, but I know I'm at an inch. I'm going to dial in a hundred. That'll put me at about 0 0.900 thousandths. Then after that, I'm going to dial in another 100. I'll be at 0.8. And the finished diameter is 750, so I'll probably dial 25 or 30. Take that pass. Maybe do a little bit of polishing with emery cloth. Take a measurement. And then take what's left. And I'm pretty sure that's what I do here. So first pass is done. It's always good to, to take a quick measurement. Now, um, you need to take your finished measurements with a micrometer because a micrometer is more precise than calipers. So that's why I'm using a mic here. And um, it's good practice. Now, when you get more experienced, um, it is quicker to just use a, pair, a set of calipers. But I'm, I'm trying to show you, um, you need to get familiar with this micrometer and don't rely on your calipers, especially if they're a digital caliper, as a, a crutch. So right there, it looks like we're at uh, 896, uh, 0.896 diameter, which makes sense because I was at an inch. I touched off, I went in 100. So I'm dialing in another 100. And the feed rate, again, um, it's at a 0 0.006 per revolution. That means it's moving towards the chuck six thousandths of an inch for every rotation of the spindle and it's given us a nice little chip um, like I said it previously in the last video we could be feeding more aggressively but I'm representing what you're gonna be doing as a student and six thousandths feed rate is not terribly slow and it's definitely not too fast so you'll see me stop here short of the shoulder and then I'll kind of hand feed well looks like I just rapid it away but my initial one inch um, mark line is still visible on the part now that looks like it has a little bit of fuzz on the finish it's kind of hard to tell um, maybe not because I am just measuring but always remember if you're measuring over a fuzzy finish um, you're not getting a good measurement Now in this pass here, we should see a shallower depth of cut. Oh, actually, you know what? I just realized something. A few seconds ago, I said that this was a 750 diameter, but it, it's actually a 0.625, so I misspoke there. Um, so that is another pass of 100 thousandths. So after this pass, I would have roughly 70 thousandths or so to until finished which means I'm gonna dial half of half of that remaining um, because we want our last two cuts to be 
very similar in their tool depth and that's going to establish an even tool pressure which means we'll have somewhat predictable um, tool deflection so let's see here look at that we're at 697 okay cool so um, after my first cut I was at 896 and then I took two more hundred thousands pass passes and I removed basically a perfect uh, 200 Now, um, a second ago, you noticed I actually was able to just turn the knob and I sped up the RPM. So as you're turning down your diameters, um, periodically you need to adjust your RPM because the smaller the diameter, the, the faster we can turn our spindle or that we need to turn our spindle in order to have the proper cutting action. And I'm going ahead and I'm just lightly kissing this with uh, 120 grit emery cloth. Um, 120 is my favorite. I find it to be uh, coarse enough that you can knock the metal off quick, but uh, it's not going to leave ugly, rough line uh, finish. So this will be my uh, last measurement before I dial to my finish size. And what do we got here? 71 maybe 671 I think that's what I'm seeing <clears throat> my finish size is 625 so I'm in dial it. I'm going for it because you don't want to get yourself in the habit of trying to stop 5,000 shy because you're just gonna get really really good at landing at the wrong number and then it's gonna take you more time to file and polish the metal to its finish size now with our tolerances we have on this project that is pretty much a waste of time so we don't want to build those bad habits now I cut in I dialed in my cut I fed it down the part I disengaged the feed I moved the carriage slightly to towards the truck and then I fed out um, and I did not move the carriage after I fed the tool out with the cross slide because I'm about to take a measurement from the end of the part to the shoulder I just created and you see me touch the end of the part with my finger and I noticed a slight burr so that's why I turned the spindle back on to knock that burr down with a file because if you measure over a burr that's going to be a, an error in your finished uh, product so you'll see me use some digital calipers here and I'm using I don't even know what you'd call it most people use the telescoping stem that comes off the the other end of the caliper but it's far more sturdy if you use the head or the jaw side of the caliper and this is what I was talking about so I have my travel indicator you have to have it square against the carriage and then I just rotated it to zero so now I know where my dial setting was on my cross slide when I made my last cut so I'm moving the carriage towards the chuck and I'm gonna hand feed the cross slide in until either I get really close to the part or I get to the last number that I dialed so this is where a pen and paper can come in handy or I find that if I say those numbers to myself quietly that I will remember them if I don't say them out loud they just disappear into my memory hole. So uh, either write it down or figure out what works for you to, to track that number. And now here before I move along and turn my compound to cut my chamfer, I'm gonna actually verify the size. And we got it perfect. Maybe a tenth under 0.625 but we might just be seeing some parallax error from the camera angle. 
and then I looks like I'm gonna verify my my shoulder distance here and I'm ex expecting plus or minus one or two thousands and we see a point nine 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 so that's pretty good stuff all right remove your tools before you go and make adjustments to anything on the lathe because that cutting tool can cut your skin just as easy as it can cut steel and I've told this story to I think every student I've ever had uh, one of my friends in high school he had to go to the hospital and get um, get some stitches across his forearm because he was making an adjustment and he ran his forearm across a lathe turning tool and he got himself pretty good so uh, take the second take your tool out of the tool holder the tool post make sure you're not leaving uh, drill bits or centers in the tailstock because you can definitely get yourself on those sharp edges as well and also when I set that tool back in the tool post I did not drop it um, set them in nicely those little 3 8 studs that we have that's the very very cheap all thread and they will bend with repetitive drops they, they will start to bend where they meet the actual tool holder so here I am I'm just gonna throw some bluing on the end of this part and then I'm going to use my calipers again to mark a 16th inch length down the part because the call out for this chamfer is a um, 16th by 45 and that means a 16th of an inch down the part not across the angle that you're cutting and that's actually a pretty common mistake that new students will make And you know, if I open my calipers and I went to 0 .060, if I was doing this and I wasn't filming, I would say that's good enough because if I'm just scribing a line in a lathe, uh, I don't really have to land on the perfect thousands with my, my caliper. Now the compound is at 45 degrees and it's kind of swung around to the uh, opposite side that it will normally be placed at and that's okay because there the part is a short stubby part now I'm just going back and forth with the, the compound that's the only thing moving at the angle and then I'm going to slowly go in with the cross slide until I make contact with the end of the part I would not recommend you move the carriage at all because you will get a large um, adjustment to your depth of cut if you move the carriage for example towards the the spindle and then you move take a pass with the compound you might be shocked at how much metal you remove so the cross slide is going to give us a much finer adjustment and I'm feeding across that surface again I want to make a chip but I don't want to have a, a nasty finish. So uh, you will develop your own um, hand-eye coordination with what the appropriate rate of uh, rotation is. Um, and then it's always going to also be affected by the spindle RPM. So a higher RPM without smoking your tool is going to give you a better finish because your imper imperfect rotation speed will be... Uh, kind of hidden by the, the rate at which this, the part's actually spinning. And that's actually pretty much going to wrap up this video. The next video we're going to turn the dead center and then start to turn our uh, remaining fits.